In this video, let's try to understand why we need a framework by creating a SP.NET Core application without a framework and see how it works and what problem it has so we can understand why we need a framework like ASP.NET Core MVC. Let's start by creating a project. By the way, I'm using Visual Studio 2022 Preview Edition so that I have access to .NET 8. So go to New, Project. In the search bar, type in ASP.NET Core. And if you scroll down, you can see this ASP.NET Core empty. Choose this option. Click on the Next button. And let's name the solution MVC Course and project name Web Application. Click on Next and choose the latest framework. By the time you use it, you might be already seeing the released version of .NET 8. I'm currently using .NET 8 with Preview 7. Clicking on Create, keeping everything as default. Application is created. And if we go to our Solution Explorer, you can see this program.cs file. So this looks like it's a console application, right? So if you create a console application, you also have a program.cs file. So you can consider this as a console application. It actually runs as a console application. If we run it, let's see what's happening. You can see the console application is running right over here. And it is listened to this on this port. It is also listening to another one. And the content root folder is this folder we just created. And you can see the hello world content here. Basically, the browser is sending a request to request a web page from this location. And first thing that this application does is that it maps the root URL to this function. Basically, this is a function. And this function doesn't have any parameter. If you have any parameter, it will go over here. And the function returns a string, which is hello world, right? So th this is the first thing that it does, right? It maps the request to this function. Secondly, this function process the request by simply return the string. Thirdly, this string is returned as part of the HTTP response to the browser, and it renders on the browser. As we mentioned in the previous video, a traditional web application framework should do the three things. Mapping, handle the request, return the HTML. You can see that even the simple application already does all those three things. Of course, except that, you know, it's not actually returning HTML, it's returning a simple string. But we can modify this to actually return a HTML. I happen to have the code created. I have a helper function to help me to write the HTML. I'm gonna paste it over here. You can see that this write HTML function, it takes the HTTP context, takes the HTML, and then it uses the response object to write the HTML out. So if we want to write some HTML, we can, first of all, pass in the context object. Okay, so basically, this is a type of dependency injection. We will talk about it later. But the context can be passed like this. And then we can implement the function to write the HTML. So first of all, we can write very simple HTML like this. And we put our hello world inside here. This time, it will be header one. And then we can add a line break here. And we can say, welcome to this new world. We close our body and close the HTML document. Okay, once I have the HTML, forgot to name the variable here. We can then call the helper function to write the HTML out. Let's pass in the context and then pass in the HTML string. Let's give it a try. Run the application again. And now you can see that our HTML is beautifully rendered on the browser. We can even make it a lot more complicated. And I have prepared some code here. I'm going to copy and paste it over here, and then we will go through the codes. Okay, now I have two map. First, I map the get request to this document. And you can see that this is actually a HTML form, and it has user and password. So this is actually a simple login form. And then there, this maps a HTTP post request. So basically when the submit button is clicked on, this form is posted back to this particular URL. And this map post function 
actually maps this request to this particular function. And this particular function, first of all, get the username and password. It verifies the username and password. If it verifies successfully, then it shows welcome to our simple framework. Otherwise, it spit out the same URL that is spit out in this get function, allowing the user to log in again with the same form. So let's give it a try. Now you can see the username and password. And if I type in Frank, and if I type in a wrong password, click on login, it says login failed. Why it says login failed? You can see that in the else statement here, we have a label and it says login failed. Okay, so if I enter the correct password, which is password, click on login. Now it says, welcome to our simple framework. But this type of simple framework has a lot of problems. First of all, you can see that we have to analyze the request and get parameters out, which is the data that we need to work with. And secondly, the HTML is in a string and it's very hard to work with. It's very hard to manipulate. Thirdly, the logic here and the view, which is the HTML, are all mixed together. And then you can see that validation is done completely manually. There isn't a mechanism for developers to do it otherwise. The business logic here is also mixed up with the HTML, which is the view. So in a word, everything is extremely tightly coupled. Basically, you just have to do everything in this function. Ideally, we need a framework that provides separation of concerns where we have a dedicated functionality to getting parameters. We have a dedicated functionality for doing validations. We have a dedicated functionality to work with HTML. We have dedicated place to work with authentication and authorization. So everything has a, its own place to implement so that we don't have to put everything together and work with, with this one single function. So that's where MVC comes to rescue. And we are going to cover how MVC works starting from next video. I will see you in the next one.